This is all good automation. I'm back in the shop. I want to show you uh, what I've changed on my electrolysis cell. This uh, black tower you see here is my new bubbler. Um, it uh, has a uh, toilet flange down here at the bottom for a stand and then a uh, double T uh, that's upside down that is basically just an access port and then right here there's a joint that uh, separates the uh, uh, stand from the bubbler itself. I don't know if you can see down in here but uh, there's an end cap and a reducer in there and a, uh, this is where the uh, electrolyte is pumped out from on that square cap and then also where the uh, the electrical cable goes in for the the uh, ultrasonics transducer uh, the uh, this is where it draws the water out of the column here the electrolyte in the uh, in this uh, bubbler is up to about well let's say about right here which is about almost four liters of of electrolyte uh, and so it, I mean the so it the, the electrolytes from all the way down here all the way up to about oh well, let's say about right there is how full it is uh, when the cell is running the uh, uh, foam builds up maybe oh an inch or maybe two inches up in the, the, uh, the, space. the, the bubbler here and this is where the, the H hydroxy comes out and uh, goes to the hometer that's here um, uh, the uh, I've got a, a multiple valve set up on here so that I can disconnect the uh, the pump and the cell without emptying the uh, uh, the uh, elect electrolyte out of the uh, out of the bubbler because it's kind of a pain in the neck to, to put back take out and put back in. But here's the uh, the pump that I'm using. It's a, uh, a 12 volt uh, utility bilge pump sold by uh, Harbor Freight. Um, just be aware that uh, the uh, hydroxide will uh, eat at the uh, bond between the uh, uh, brass fitting that goes on the shaft of the pump and the impeller and it will fail eventually so uh, what I did to uh, uh, <coughs> enhance the uh, impeller was to put a little 440 screw through the uh, neoprene impeller into the uh, uh, decoller that holds the the impeller on the shaft so that it is uh, physically attached to the uh, the, the D-ring uh, you know, in the impeller. So if that uh, uh, bond between the neoprene and the, the D-ring fails, it'll still turn the pump. Um, the other thing, I got another bile back here and then it goes into the bottom of my cell. And uh, the, the cell is made up of uh, six uh, stainless steel plates of uh, four inches by ten inches and uh, they are spaced uh, by some uh, gasket material that is 15 thousandths of an inch thick and I'm currently using uh, <clears throat> quarter inch nylon bolts there's 16 of them around the outside edge of this cell <coughs> to uh, uh, put the cell together uh, this cell does not seal up as well as I'd like it to, to uh, if you uh, close the valve off so that the uh, uh, gases cannot escape out of the top of the cell with uh, this uh, uh, valve right here that goes back to the cell. If you close that valve, pressure builds up in the cell and it leaks uh, quite a bit. So I've got to improve the uh, uh, sealability of this cell. I need to put some silicon sealant on the, the gaskets and put some probably some steel <coughs> stainless steel bolts do that are insulated with some uh, quarter inch Tigon tubing and then I can use a number eight 
uh, screw to go through that and hold it all together and be able to tighten it down very tight so that I can actually build some pressure within the cell. <clears throat> That's my goal is to, to build a cell that will not leak at uh, 20 psi or even 30 psi. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think I've showed you the uh, width modulation device that I've got here. It runs at 100, 100 hertz and is adjustable from 0 to 100% PWM. It's connected up to my battery. There's a Harbor Freight uh, cutoff switch, some Harbor Freight uh, meters. <clears throat> the one on the left is the voltage that comes directly off the, uh, the pulse width modulation device where those easy clips are attaching to the, the board. <clears throat> which also goes over and feeds the power to the to the cell. On the right side here, there's uh, my uh, homemade shunt. It's calibrated with my fluke meter, so it's a fairly accurate shunt. I also put it on a milliohm meter that I have and, and tested it and verified its uh, calibration. And uh, this is just a I'm measuring in uh, millivolts, so it's a a millivolt per amp. That's uh, what I set it up as. Here is my uh, the last time uh, on my uh, cell. The last time I ran it. So uh, let me let me run this cell one more time. Uh, if you notice also that the uh, the tube that comes out of the top of the cell comes up here, curls around, and ends up here. And if you notice that uh, this uh, tubing is uh, entering tangent to the uh, inside surface of the uh, bubbler. The reason I did that is so that uh, the uh, uh, electrolyte as it uh, comes back into the bubbler, it uh, creates a spinning action inside the bottom of the uh, bubbler and helps to uh, knock down the uh, foam that is produced by the uh, uh, electrolyzer. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start this up. Oh, let, let me show you the this battery box. This is a a battery box that I built for my ham radio operating uh, unit. It's a what they call a go box. It has uh, some Anderson connectors on it that can be disconnected and connected very easily. They're they're good for 30 amps. There's a a switch on here that turns it on and off. It also has a some cigarette lighter connections here that are also connected to the same switch and there's another set on the other side. So this is my go box. I use it for my ham radio equipment during emergencies. Uh, but I'm also but I'm using it here for uh, supply for my uh, uh, pump for the uh, electrolyzer. Uh, I'm going to start the pump up <coughs> and uh, I'm going to turn on the electricity here and you can see uh, instantaneously the foam that comes out of the cell. I'm just going to pulse it on and off here so you can see that. You can see that the, the uh, ultrasonics and the uh, tangent uh, uh, tube clears the uh, uh, bubbles out of the uh, electrolyte fairly quickly. The pump is pumping uh, the electrolyte at a rate of about uh, 77 or 78 milliliters per second, which is enough uh, electrolyte to replace all the electrolyte between the cells 10 times per second.